Hey y'all, what's up people? This is Paul. I'm in the middle of Iowa right now. On my way to California. This is my second time doing this trip. Two years ago I left New York uh, in search of a better life, better job. And uh, I almost achieved it. But um, long story short, I had to come back to New York for a little bit and uh, hit a reset button. And uh, I'm going to try this again. I think this time it's actually going to work. Anyway, the main reason why I wanted to start this video was I was listening to a bunch of podcasts today about the uh, New York Giants and what they're going to do with their number two pick. And right off the bat, I'm going to say I've been a Barkley guy from the beginning. I still am. I think they should draft Barkley. And it's not because it's the sexiest pick. Even though it is, that's not the reason why I want Barkley. The reason why I want Barkley is not because he's the best running back in this draft, but because he is the best weapon that's come out of football in quite a while. He could turn around your offense instantly. Not only is he a running back, he has got amazing hands and can run routes. He's got some tremendous speed. He is the complete package. So in these podcasts that I heard today, I hear uh, some arguments from both sides. But there was one argument that really pissed me off. Actually, it was a guy from ESPN. I don't know what his name is. Rothsburg or Richardsburg, whatever the fuck his name is. And he made the claim that it's a no-brainer. The Giants go quarterback at two case closed. Because of the obvious argument that you don't draft a running back with the second pick and when you need a quarterback for the future uh, when the year 2030 comes you want you want a quarterback there that cemented himself and uh, where's Barkley going to be? You know, he's not going to be in the league anymore. You know what? That's a flawed argument. The main reason why it's a flawed argument is because I don't know about you guys but I don't see a Peyton Manning in this draft. You know, these three or four quote unquote franchise quarterbacks yeah they're franchise quarterbacks possibly but how many, of them, how many of them can we say have the potential to be elite in the past how many quarterbacks coming out that were elite level became elite level well there's only been a few of them For example when Peyton Manning got drafted everybody knew that this kid's going to be special this quarterback draft maybe I'm wrong I don't see that I see a different quarterback here where there's a plethora of quality quarterbacks. There's a bunch of franchise-level quarterbacks. I think people get misconstrued between the concept of franchise quarterback and elite quarterback. Right now in the NFL, there's probably 15, give or take, franchise quarterbacks. Uh, what would be an example? Mariota, Tennessee. Is he a franchise quarterback? Yeah, sure he is. Is he elite? Of course not. <laughs> so you have you have a ton of franchise quarterbacks. You have, what, two, three, four elite quarterbacks in the league right now? So this draft class of quarterbacks, you have three, four, maybe five potential franchise quarterbacks. I can't tell the future, but I would put my money that one of them might be in the elite category if we go five, six, seven years down the line. One of them. I bet you two out of these four or five are looking for a job. They're trying to they're trying to prove to somebody, they're trying to prove to the league that they're worth being a quarterback. I'm sorry, but there's a there's a Mark Sanchez in this in this draft. There is one. As a Giants fan, I do not want to see them draft the next Mark Sanchez. I would much rather, and I feel much safer saying, draft the next Adrian Peterson. The end.